In November 2018, a San Diego Union Tribune journalist named Harry Jones wrote an article about a hiker who found some interesting wreckage in the Anza Borrego State Park. It turned out the wreckage was from a U.S. Navy F-8 Crusader that had crashed 50 years earlier. In the last two years, I have visited five air wreck sites. Three of those were located using Google Earth. And the last one I found only after submitting a Freedom of Information Act request. Keep our dates up at that altitude. We uh, need immediate support. We've got in 1969, three military aircraft were involved in a mid-air collision over the Anza Borrego State Park. Two of the aviators ejected safely and were rescued by a Navy search and rescue helicopter out of Yuma Naval Air Station. But one pilot was unable to eject and he was killed in the accident. 50 years later, the wreckage of those aircraft can still be found spread out over the barren desert. And that's the situation with hundreds of military air crashes in California. The pilot's remains were recovered, but the wreckage was left where it fell. This is where most of my searches begin. It's an incredible website created by Joe Edoni, who spent years developing it. It has a long address, so I'll paste a link to it in this video's description on the YouTube page. Joe has looked into hundreds of military air wrecks in Southern California and beyond, and it is shocking to scroll through his colorful thumbnails and see how many there are. The aircraft that was found by the hiker in 2015 is right here. And the newspaper article about it provided the first clue about its location. The article said that the wreckage was in a canyon in the North Pinion Mountains of Anza Borrego State Park. So I'm launching Google Earth and I'm typing in North Pinion Mountains, California. I'm going to condense two hours of searching down to about one minute. I'm gonna select full screen so I'm not distracted by other things floating on my desktop. I already know that this small mountain range is bordered on the north by State Highway 78 and on the left by another small highway called S2. So I know the general outline of this range, even though it's hard to see on this aerial map. This is how I do it. I bring up a grid pattern with each square being a thousand feet wide. Now everybody has to find their own right way of doing this. Mine is to zoom into the grid. And in this case, I wanna start at the top right hand corner of our search area. This makes it easier for me to remember when I want to get up from the computer and take a break. We know that the wreckage is up in a shallow canyon, but we don't know that canyon's orientation, so we'll have to look at every canyon. What we're looking for is a random collection of bright metal pieces thrown over a wide area, like these examples here. And we're hoping that today's wreckage stands out against the ground that it's lying on. But as you'll see, that is not always the case, because this point right here is where the aircraft that we're looking for impacted the earth. We can't see it because the sun was directly overhead when this aerial photo was taken. But if you go up to view, then scroll down to historical imagery, which means that we're asking Google to show us old maps of the same area. There it is. Although my friends and I have found other aircraft by using Google Earth, in all honesty, we did not find this one that way. The breakthrough came after I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the Naval History and Heritage Command. The accident report they sent back was perfunctory, but the photos of the crash site gave its location away. Because when I hiked out there, I was able to align myself with that strange white streak on the faraway mountain that you can see in these photos. 